We have seen so far how to represent sinusoidal voltages and sinusoidal currents with complex numbers, with phasors. And the same with inductors and capacitors and resistors. We represent them with complex numbers, which are the impedances. But what about power? Let's consider that now. Let's say that we have an element whose voltage and current are sinusoidal and they look like that. The voltage is a function of time, this one, with an RMS value V, an angular frequency omega, and a phase shift alpha. And the current through that element has, of course, the same angular frequency omega, and it has an RMS value I, and it has a different phase beta. If that is the voltage and that is the current in the element to find the power, the instantaneous power is just multiplying V as a function of T with I as a function of T. This is what we get. The power also is a function of time, of course. Is it is a function of time that is changing with twice the angular frequency as the voltage and the current. But of that function of time, the instantaneous power, if we find the average, the average turns out to be the first term. The average power has that shape, this one here. This term is the average power. RMS volts, RMS amps, and the cosine of a certain angle. What angle is that? Is the difference between the phase of the voltage alpha minus the phase of the current beta. Graphically, if this is the phasor for voltage and this angle is alpha, the phase of the voltage, and this is the current vector, and this angle is beta, the phase of the current, then the angle we're taking the cosine of is the difference angle is the angle between the phasor V and the phasor I. That is the power angle theta. When we measure volts and amps using an RMS ammeter and voltmeter, what we get is two real numbers. If we multiply those readings of a voltmeter in RMS volts and the ammeter in RMS amps, what we get actually is not the power. It's apparently the power, but not quite the power. It's another real number, S. We call that the apparent power. It's just the product of the RMS volts times the RMS amps. The unit for that is the volt ampere. And if there are too many kilovolt ampere or even megavolt ampere, KVA or MVA, the actual average power we have seen is the fraction of that apparent power. Is this fraction of the apparent power VI? That fraction, that average power, is the apparent power times a power factor. This power factor. The power factor is the cosine of the phase difference between the voltage and the current. Let's go to the oscilloscope. The black curve is the voltage in the element, the blue one is the current in the element, and the red one is the instantaneous power in the element. We observe that the current is lagging behind the voltage by this little angle, the power factor angle. In this graphic, we observe what is the average power that we computed already as being the product of the RMS volts times the RMS amps, that is the apparent power multiplied by power factor, which is the cosine of theta. And who is theta? And that little angle that we saw before, this angle, the phase difference between the voltage and the current. We observe that the absorbed power is positive most of the time. Between points A and B, the absorbed power is positive, so that means that the element is absorbing power from the source. But between the points B and C, the instantaneous power is negative. That means that the element is absorbing a negative power, it is returning power back to the source. You say, wait a minute. Let's recap that. Between A and B, the element is absorbing power. Correct. And between B and C, the element is delivering power back to the source. Yes, that's correct. If we remember that the integral of the power with respect to time, that is the area under the curve of power is the energy transported by that current, we can determine what is the energy absorbed by the element between points A and B in time. That shaded area represents the energy absorbed by the element between A and B. But between B and C, the element returns to the source the little energy represented by that shaded area that I have just included. So what this means is that in every power cycle, the element absorbs this amount of power and then returns this little power back to the source.
In a way, the element is playing ping pong with this little, this little power, with the sources, with the generator. The customer will say to the utility, you can charge me only for the energy that I'm actually using up. You can charge me for the average power. Because this power, I'm playing ping pong with your generator, so I'm returning that. It's sure I'm taking that from the generator, but I'm returning that every half a cycle. So you cannot charge me for that. But the company says, sure, but you're playing ping pong with that energy using my transmission lines, the coils of my generators, the coils of the, of the transformers. Sure, you have to pay for that ping pong energy and the associated ping pong power. We call this average power, active power. And this traveling back and forth of ping pong energy can be acquainted for as another power. We call that reactive power, Q. We call this P, active power, and the associated power with this one that we will see is VI sine of the same power factor angle. That is going to be Q, the reactive power. The ping pong power, we call that, but only in this course. Active power, reactive power, zero. Let's talk about that ping pong power. It is a fraction of the parent power. It's given by a parent power multiplied by the sine of the power factor angle, phase of the voltage, alpha minus phase of the voltage, beta. A parent power times ping pong power factor. The ping pong power factor is the sine of the phase difference between V and I. The conventions are we measure Q in VARs or in kilovars or megavars. Kilo volt ampere reactives. A trick to remember, just draw a triangle with S, the apparent power is the hypotenuse, like so. And then the sides are going to be the active power P, the average power, and the reactive power or ping pong power Q on one side. And this angle is the power factor angle, the one that is alpha minus beta, the angle between the phasor for voltage and the phasor for current. That triangle is the power triangle, but this is a mnemonic trick to remember the formulas. We could also say that we can represent the power by a complex number. This complex number. That complex number has a real part P and an imaginary Q, but that does not mean that Q is an imaginary power. It isn't. It's a very physical power related to an energy that is ping-ponging back and forth between the generators and uh, the load. However, in a complex number representation, it's playing the role of the imaginary part of that complex power. Complex power, S with a hat, has the average power for its real part and the ping pong power or reactive power as its imaginary part. Real power, imaginary power. But I prefer instead of those names, the names of active power and reactive power that have more meaning instead of just making reference to the positions that P and Q play in the complex power representation. Let's review some formulas for power in AC. For any element with voltage and currents known, Kreiser for V is RMS volts with a phase alpha, RMS amps with a phase beta. The complex power in the element is the product of a phasor V with a conjugate of a phasor I, like so. We multiply them and you get the... Even though that formula works for every single situation, the complex number ones, there are simply real number power formulas that we shall see. For resistors, we only have to use the RMS volts and the RMS amps. We do not need the phasor for V and the phasor for I. For resistors, we know that Q, the reactive power, the ping pong power, is always zero. Resistors don't play ping pong. And the power in a resistor depends on the RMS current through the resistor or on the RMS volts through the resistor with formulas that are real number formulas like so. If you know the current, use this one. If you know the voltage, by all means, use this other one, formula for P. For reactors, that is, inductors or capacitors, we only need to know the RMS volts or the RMS amps. In that case, we compute the reactance. For the inductors, the reactance, remember, it's a real number, omega L, or the capacitor, the reactance is also a real number, a negative real number, negative 1 over omega C. All our real numbers, I insist, X is given in ohms, I RMS is V RMS, Q and P. All of those are real numbers. 
the active power P in a reactor, in a capacitor and an inductor is zero. It's always zero. The reactive power is always X I RMS square or V RMS square over X. Observe that before the capacitor, because X is a negative number, Q turns out to be a negative number. The Q we're computing actually is the absorbed Q. So that means that the capacitor absorbs negative Q, which is translated into the capacitor produces Q and the inductor absorbs Q.